Hi, my name is Dr. Becky Kuhn. I'm a physician who specializes in HIV AIDS. How does HIV spread? Fortunately, HIV does not spread easily. The number one lesson is that HIV is hard to transmit. Let's talk about each of the primary methods of HIV transmission. Sexual contact. This is by far the most common way that HIV spreads. Sexual contact is not the only way HIV is spread, but it is by far the most common way. HIV is present in the semen of an infected man. HIV is present in an infected man's ejaculation fluid called semen. HIV is not only present in the blood of an infected individual, but also in the semen of an infected man and in the vaginal fluids of an infected woman. When two people have sex and exchange body fluids, HIV may spread from one partner to the other. Hi. The organs of the male reproductive system include the testes, seminiferous tubules, epididymis, ducts, urethra, and penis. The seminal vesicle and prostate and mobile urethral glands produce nourishing fluid for the sperm. The testes subdivide into lobules that contain seminiferous tubules that produce sperm. Sperm moves from the seminiferous tubules to the efferent tubules to the epididymis where they mature. The end of the epididymis forms the ductus deferens or vas deferens. This structure ascends the posterior border of the testes, penetrates the inguinal canal, enters the pelvic cavity, and loops over and around the urinary bladder. The seminal vesicles are glands at the base of the bladder that produce seminal fluid. Together with the ductus deferens, they form the ejaculatory ducts. During ejaculation, these ducts eject sperm into the male urethra the common passageway for urine and sperm. The prostate gland surrounds the prostatic urethra just below the bladder. The fluid it secretes goes through small ducts into the prostatic urethra. The bulbal urethral glands produce alkaline mucus secretions that empty into the urethra. The urethra passes through the penis carrying semen, a mixture of sperm and secretions of the glands. During ejaculation, the smooth muscle sphincter at the base of the bladder closes off to ensure that no urine is expelled and that semen does not enter the urinary bladder. Sperm moves from the seminiferous tubules to the epididymis, to the ductus deferens, to the ejaculatory duct, to the outside of the body by the urethra. Spermatogenesis takes place in the testes within the seminiferous ducts. As sperm begin to mature, they are stored within the epididymis, a coiled structure atop the testes. With ejaculation, sperm are expelled from the epididymis, up the vas deferens, and into the pelvic cavity. There, the seminal vesicles and the prostate release fluids that accompany the sperm in the ejaculate, traveling through and out the urethra. A man's reproductive system includes two glands called testicles or testes. They're located inside a pouch of skin called the scrotum. The scrotum is outside the body, which keeps the testicles cool enough to make sperm. Connected to each testicle is a mass of coiled tubes called the epididymis. Each epididymis stores immature sperm while they continue to develop. During sex, sperm travel through a tube attached to the epididymis, called the vas deferens, to another tube called the ejaculatory duct. There, sperm mix with fluid from two glands, called seminal vesicles, as well as the prostate gland. Now called semen, this fluid mixture exits the body through the urethra, the tube inside the penis that usually carries urine their reproductive fluid, called semen, and their reproductive cells, called sperm. Their During sex with a woman, this process, called ejaculation, deposits semen in her vagina. Semen contains tens of millions of sperm. From the vagina, sperm can pass through the cervix, uterus, and fallopian tubes to fertilize an egg from the woman's body. 
The function of the spermatozoid is to transport 23 chromosomes to the interior of the oocyte that contains another 23 chromosomes. It is divided into the head with the nucleus containing 23 stored chromosomes. The nucleus is covered in its anterior two-thirds by a cap. The acrosome, which permits the perforation of the pellucid zone and penetration of the ovum with a drill-like motion. In the middle section, energy is produced that is used to move the tail. The sperm are propelled from the base of the vagina to the fallopian tube where the oocyte will be found. During sexual intercourse, about 300 million sperm enter the vagina. Soon afterward, millions of them will either flow out of the vagina or die in its acidic environment. However, many survive because of the protective elements provided in the fluid surrounding them. Next, the sperm must pass through the cervix, an opening into the uterus. Usually, it remains tightly closed, but here the cervix is open for a few days while the woman ovulates. The sperm swim through the cervical mucus, which is thinned to a more watery consistency for easier passage. Once inside the cervix, the sperm continues swimming toward the uterus, though millions will die trying to make it through the mucus. Some sperm remain behind, caught in the folds of the cervix, but they may later continue the journey as a backup to the first group. Inside the uterus, muscular uterine contractions assist the sperm on their journey toward the egg. However, resident cells from the woman's immune system, mistaking the sperm for foreign invaders, destroy thousands more. Next, Half the sperm head for the empty fallopian tube, while the other half swim toward the tube containing the unfertilized egg. Now, only a few thousand remain. Inside the fallopian tube, tiny cilia push the egg toward the uterus. To continue, the sperm must surge against this motion to reach the egg. Some sperm get trapped in the cilia and die. During this part of the journey, chemicals in the reproductive tract cause the membranes covering the heads of the sperm to change. As a result, the sperm become hyperactive, swimming harder and faster toward their destination. At long last, the sperm reach the egg. Only a few dozen of the original 300 million sperm remain. The egg is covered with a layer of cells called the corona radiata. The sperm must push through this layer to reach the outer layer of the egg, the zona pellucida. When sperm reach the zona pellucida, they attach to specialized sperm receptors on the surface, which triggers their acrosomes to release digestive enzymes, enabling the sperm to burrow into the layer. Inside the zona pellucida is a narrow, fluid-filled space just outside the egg cell membrane. The first sperm to make contact will fertilize the egg. After a perilous journey and against incredible odds, a single sperm attaches to the egg cell membrane. Within a few minutes, their outer membranes fuse and the egg pulls the sperm inside. This event causes changes in the egg membrane that prevent other sperm from attaching to it. Next, the egg releases chemicals that push other sperm away from the egg and create an impenetrable fertilization membrane. As the reaction spreads outward, the zona pellucida hardens, trapping any sperm unlucky enough to be caught inside. Outside the egg, sperm are no longer able to attach to the zona pellucida. 
When ejaculation occurs during intercourse, approximately 200 million sperm, or spermatozoa, are deposited into the vagina. They swim through the cervix, propelled by whip-like motions of their tails, or flagella, after which muscular contractions of the uterus direct them to the uterine tubes. This process usually takes between 30 minutes and 2 hours. Only around 200 spermatozoa will reach the secondary oocyte in the uterine tube, and of these, only one will fertilize it. Fertilization cannot occur until two processes have taken place, capacitation and the acrosomal reaction. These can take several hours. Capacitation is not fully understood, but secretions from the uterus wall and uterine tube destabilize the plasma membrane surrounding the head of the spermatozoa, or acrosome, resulting in the membrane becoming more fluid, which helps to prepare the spermatozoa for the events of fertilization. The spermatozoa become hyperactive, their flagella beat more frequently, and their heads move laterally. The capacitated spermatozoa move through the corona radiata, a dense layer of granulosa cells surrounding the oocyte, and come into contact with the zona pellucida. The zona pellucida expresses specific receptor proteins called ZP3, which bind to proteins expressed in the heads of the spermatozoa. The binding of ZP3 triggers the acrosome reaction, during which the enzymatic contents of the acrosome are released. These enzymes help to digest a path through the zona pellucida, allowing the spermatozoa to enter the perivitellin space and reach the plasma membrane of the secondary oocyte with which it fuses. To ensure that only one spermatozoan penetrates the zona pellucida and fuses with the oocyte membrane, fusion of the spermatozoan and oocyte membranes activates a fast and a slow block to polyspermy. During fast block to polyspermy, after fusion, the oocyte membrane depolarizes, preventing other spermatozoa from fusing with it. Slow block to polyspermy is also stimulated by this depolarization. During slow block to polyspermy, a wave of intracellular calcium is released, causing small cortical granules beneath the oocyte membrane to release their contents, rendering ZP3 inactive and making the zona pellucida impermeable. Upon the spermatozoan entering, the oocyte undergoes meiosis too, and further develops into the female pronucleus. During this time, the sperm develops into the male pronucleus, and the two pronuclei fuse to form a single diploid nucleus, or zygote, 